more of a restorative, lower intensity class. The goal today is uh, encourage mobility, recovery. Um, we're going to do some breath work to start. We're going to finish with some breath work. Um, we will challenge some of your range of motion today, but today is not supposed to be a crazy intense class. Wednesdays and Saturdays are the higher intensity classes. Um, today is just we're just going to make you move right, open you up. So uh, a couple things to remember. Those of you who were here yesterday, you guys heard this, but I'm going to go ahead and say it again. Um, irradiation and closed angle pain are two things that are super important for this class. So irradiation is just Think of it as just total body stability, using as much muscle as possible. So if we're using the shoulder, that's our target joint as we go around, I want your body stronger and more stabilized than anything else in relation to the shoulder. So you're a statue in the body, so you can truly move in the target joint the way we want to, is going to be the goal. Uh, that applies for whatever we're doing. And I'll reiterate tons of cues throughout this so you guys remember. Flex your core, squeeze your butt, keep the legs, the, the, the hips still, only move from the shoulder, don't let the scat move, stuff like that. And I'm going to just cue you through everything. Uh, closing angle pain is really important today, especially because today is kind of like a self scan day, kind of like a self assessment day to a certain extent. Because since we're doing lower intensity movement and we're exploring full range of motion in all of our joints, you guys are going to get a chance to scan everything and see what you really have access to and what you don't. So closing angle pain wise, if we're going through shoulders, for example, come all the way up, you're, you don't have any pinches or anything here, but as we rotate out and reach back, all of a sudden you have a pinch in the back of your shoulder. Something to keep note of. As we go through, if those things clean up, awesome. If you have persistent pinches, pains, clicks, pops, whatever you want to call them, in the same range every single time, it's good for you to know, so that way you know where your weaknesses and weak areas are, what tissues you possibly need to put more effort into, uh, which classes to keep eyes on, so you know when to come for shoulders, when to come for scapula, when to come for overhead, whatever it is. So just take it as a scan and really see what your body's moving on. Um, and if something pinches or gets sharp, don't fight into it at all. If it's a little pressure in there, it's a little pinchy, go easy. First round, if it starts to open up, kill it. If it doesn't, you must respect that because otherwise we're just smashing tissue. And the last thing I want you guys to do is leave here with new inflammation. I want you to be in a good shape. Cool. So, uh, anybody have any questions? So we're going to start with some breath work. So you guys are just going to lay on your back. Start. Yeah, let's go ahead and close it. So we're going to do more of a sympathetic breath work. So we're trying to encourage the sympathetic nervous system to fire, so I'm trying to wake you guys up on this one, and then we're going to do a parasympathetic breath work at the end to get you guys relaxed, so we can really maximize the restorative stuff. So first, everybody put a hand on your chest and a hand on your stomach. So we're going to start via the nose briefly, and then this is all going to be mouth breathing, and we're really going to try to get you guys kind of hyped up a little bit. So first, through the nose, I want you to inhale deeply into your stomach, feel the belly rise, and then let that fill into your chest. And so you've got no more room for air, and then just exhale. Through the nose, let everything sink. And then we'll do that again. Inhale through the stomach, to the chest, fill everything big, and let it out. Good. And again, in. Raise the stomach, raise the chest, exhale. You can even use your hand to kind of push your stomach down a little bit, like you push the chest, see if you can get more air out. And again, through the nose, belly, chest, like a wave, and exhale. Let it out. One more breath like this. Big breath in. Big inhale. We're going to hold that breath at the top. And I want you guys to try to sniff in some more air. See if you can pack some more air inside. Like you're trying to expand your ribs out, into the ground, up and out of the chest. And exhale. Let that out. So now we're going to go through a couple full exhale uh, breath holes. So just two of these actually. So you guys are going to take another breath in. Into the nose. And now blow every bit of air out possible. Blow it out, feel the stomach sink, feel the ribs sink. Once there's no air left, hold your breath. If you still have air inside, you can try to blow some of that out. It might give a sense of anxiety kind of holding that breath. Just try to settle. And take a breath in. Big, huge inhale. Just take a normal exhale, nothing crazy. And now we're going to take another big inhale. Really feel the body of air, and then huge exhale. Blow every bit of your air out till there's absolutely nothing left. Challenge your sense of comfort. And then once there's nothing left, hold your breath. I recommend 
pinching your nose so you don't feel the throat tighten as much and you don't feel the abdomen spasm as much. And try to challenge yourself here. How long can you hold your breath? If you lose it, just return to normal breathing. faster and more aggressive breathing. Mm -hmm. So if anybody here has done Wim Hof breath work before, this is going to be very similar to some of that breathing technique. If you've never done that before, I'll go ahead and give you a little rundown. So what we're going to be doing is short, I say short, we're going to be taking powerful, fast inhales through the mouth. So your mouth is going to be like a straw. So, so we're trying to go a huge inhale with as much air as you can draw in, and then it's a quick reflexive exhale. So it's just as much air will fall out. Just whatever falls out that we're going for. And we're gonna repeat that for roughly 30 breaths or 30 seconds-ish, whatever comes first. And then at the end of that last exhale, we will hold our breath. And then we'll hold that as long as we can. And then we're gonna just repeat that cycle. There's typically another piece of Wim Hof that we would do, but we're not gonna do that today. All right, does that make sense to you guys? Cool. Okay, so. Everybody, you don't need to keep your hands on your body anymore if you don't want to. If you'd like to, it does help give feedback as far as where you're breathing into or maybe where you're not breathing into. So, here we go. Everybody take a breath in. And so. Keep it going. seconds. Feel 
tension in your throat, try to let that go. Feel tension in your abdomen, try to let that go. Whenever you have to breathe again, just return to a normal, light, nasal only breathing. start making our way up to our feet. Take your time, take your time. I know that breath work gets you, gets you a little fuzzy in the mind, gets your brain going. If you got tingly in the hands, that's normal. If you felt cold, that's normal. Um, that breath work technique, if you take it for, if we were to do two more rounds and I was to really get you guys to fight through it, your hands sometimes will crawl, your feet will cramp, some people actually sit up like subconsciously, they don't realize they're doing it. It's very crazy how that works. But let's go ahead and work up to the feet. You guys are going to start off with your tennis balls in your hands. We're gonna start with the extremities, upper extremities, and we'll work our way into the torso, and then to the ground, all right? So just a overview of how this is gonna to work today. We're gonna to do a lot of the same joint movements, so to speak, but in different base positions so we can kind of feel things in different ways. So first, what we're gonna do is the wrists, actually. So normally I do this with open hands, but I want you guys to do this with a closed hand. I know I have some jujitsu people in here, so y'all need strong closed wrists as well as open, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna go for this. Elbows to the side, elbows at about 90 degrees. So I will say this, if you crush your tennis balls too hard, and your wrist is gonna pop and snap like no other. So keep the forearms tight, so that way they don't move, and then just keep it nice, clean, and smooth through the tennis balls and the wrists as you move. Now, because I see everybody doing it, <laughs> you're, you're dissociating the wrist from the forearm. So as you go, we're not letting the forearm rotate at all. A lot of times as we twist, it naturally wants to move and dip and dive. So don't do that. Keep it still. And this can be tricky. You're probably going to end up staring at your forearms like a crazy person as you do this, and that's fine. All right? So, arms out, get it set, give those elbows a little squeeze in your body so you can kind of find some upper body tension. Let everybody take a breath in, exhale, and I want you to snip in some air, and then pack your core and brace your ribs, believe it or not. So now, a little squeeze on the tennis balls, nothing crazy. We're gonna peel down with the wrists. And from right here, I just want you guys to pull the knuckles back and just feel that top of your forearm or bottom of your forearm, and just kind of feel that tension. So now you're gonna think of pinkies, you're gonna tilt in towards the pinkies. Watch those forearms, don't let them flip over or move. And then from there, we're gonna attempt to start to tilt in, kind of pull the palms in towards the torso. Biggest range of motion possible. Then we're gonna to start to tilt out. And this lateral deviation of the wrist is very difficult, so you're gonna to try to pull out towards the thumbs without letting the forearms flip over. And then we're gonna crank way down as we keep that out effort. And then we're going to start to tilt back in towards the pinkies once you get to the bottom. And we're going to pull the hands back to the forearms. Big range, big pull, as far as you can take it. Take it a little crank, but that's normal. Rotate out towards the thumbs. Try to get that tilt, which is awkwardly difficult. And then you're going to peel back open. And now we're going to reverse from the bottom. So we're going to go towards the thumbs and out. Find that cranky forearm feeling and then pull up. Carve out that space. Carve it in to the side, tilt towards the pinkies, towards that midline, and then peel those wrists open. As you come back down, we got another rotation towards the thumbs, going out, pull up towards the forearms with that outlet attempt as much as you can. You're going to tilt in towards the pinkies one more time, and then back down. And once you get all the way down, you can shake them out. Hopping. So if your wrist did funny things, just take note of that. There's a weird, weird little thing you're going to figure out. Ranges of motion you wouldn't think would be difficult. I want you guys to try to learn about that. We're going to go elbows next. So now, go with elbows. We don't want wrist movement at all. I want 
from this lockdown place, and our goal is to only move from the elbow. So a big thing I see with the elbow is, well, first of all, we don't want to move the elbow pit. So what I mean by that is as she goes down, we're going to give it a full extension, and we're going to rotate as far as we possibly can. Most of the time, people do this, and they just keep twisting it. But our focus is this joint specifically, how does it move? So we're going to crank as much as we can. You're going to feel some weird stuff in this forearm. And then as you try to max that out with that internal rotation, we're going to go into flexion as we go back. And then we spiral out at the top. Again, keep the elbow pit still as you try to constantly crank out that rotation. All right? This one, tennis balls need to be squeezed tighter, for sure. Don't absolutely destroy the tennis balls in your hands unless you feel really confident in your ability to do control your elbow tissue. If you squeeze too tight here, it might actually take away from what you can do here. Okay? So, let's go ahead and get this set. We are going to do both arms at the same time, so do your best. I recommend you stare yourself down in the mirror if you can see those elbow pits, and just lock them in place with your eyes, and don't let them move. However, you got to focus on that, alright? So, we're going to start open hand like Ashley is here, and first thing I want you guys to do is just bicep curl. Just bring them straight up. So, keep that elbow pit in mind the whole time. From here, we're going to turn in as far as they can go from the top. And I want you guys to really crank through those forearms and try to squeeze out rotation that you wouldn't normally try to use. And now crush those tennis balls in your hand and go into extension and drive them out. And I want you to think triceps as you extend. Actively use that tissue. Big drive down and I'll try to bottom. Check your elbow pits and then spiral the hands out. We flip them up. Challenge your rotation. Take them as far as you can possibly go. Keep the elbow pit still. Bicep curl back up. As soon as you get up to the top, we're going to follow that twist. Turn the tennis balls forward. And as soon as you max it out, fight the floor rotation and drive in. Big extension through the elbows. Think tricep. Flex hard. And almost like you're trying to extend farther than it should go. And then we're going to rotate the tennis balls back up. Huge rotation. Make that elbow rotate farther than you think it should, and then bicep curl again. All the way to the top, and as soon as we get all the way up, we're just going to go right back into our extension, going down. Squeeze the tennis balls, your entire arm should be flexed. All the way to the bottom, lots of tricep, and then we're going to turn in at the bottom. Check the elbow pits, don't let them move. Challenge that rotation, take them as far as they can go, and then I'm going to call this a T Rex curl on the way up. Keep fighting rotation the whole way up and really try to squeeze the biceps at the top. Almost like you're going to try to make them cramp. And then turn the tennis balls the opposite direction so they should face you now. And then peel them back up. Big, strong opening. And we're almost done here. Once you get all the way to the bottom, huge, powerful rotation. Try to own that range of motion as you turn in. Open up that elbow. And we're going to curl back up. And we're going to finish with a one last rotation out. Big turn of those elbows. Fight that rotation on this last one. You've got more energy as you think. Really try to do it. And then peel all the way open down to the ground to open up those elbows for the last bit. And then once you finish up that extension, you can shake those arms out. All right? So those can be a little bit trickier than you think. If, it, if any of this feels easy, you're not trying hard enough. And I hope that doesn't come off wrong or come off negative. But seriously, if you're doing something and you're like, oh, this is easy, try hard. Carve out more space. Flex harder. Turn more. Squeeze more. We're trying to enhance your range of motion. We're not trying to just meet you exactly where you're at. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't want to over-train anybody and make tissue do stupid things today, but I do want you to work. Okay? So, shoulder blades are next. So, we're going to do this two different ways. First, arms out. So, I'm going to have you... Well, this guy's not even... Sign on, so it doesn't matter. You can do it face this way. Okay, a couple things here that I always see with people. Spine usually always kicks in. So, a lot of the times when we go into retraction and pull backwards, the back arches. So, you guys need to keep those ribs crazy tucked as we do this. And you are thinking that the only thing you're trying to move is the scapulas across the rib cage. Okay? So, as you shrug up, don't let your head go forward and your body go crazy. Try to control that as much as you can. We're going to do this in a couple different ways, so you guys are welcome to turn sideways at any point in time and catch yourself from a different angle in the mirror if you'd like to, and I'll tell you what a good time to do that is. So, I'm going to just, we're just going to do it together and talk through it. Arms up, 
Now, we're not straight in line with our shoulders. We're open a little bit. And I want you to think of that angle your arms are at, and that's the path you're traveling. As you go out, and then as you shrug up, it's just up. But as you pull backwards, you're following that angle. So it's kind of like a back and in kind of squeeze. All right? And I'll try to keep you guys as we go. All right, arms out. So, everybody, stiff in some air. Brace your ribs. Squeeze your butt. Lock your legs in place. Focus the scapulas. Punch for the wall in front of you. Reach for it. Feet over the back, open up, and feel the chest kind of get a little crampy. You're fighting for range of motion. You're trying to make it go farther than you think it needs to go. And now we're going to shrug. So we're going to take those shoulders up into our ears with as much forward effort as possible. You're going to challenge that range, and then you're going to slowly squeeze the shoulder blades back and together as high as you can. Then you're going to crack a walnut high up in the scapulas. Find that squeeze as high as you possibly can, maximize that, and then slowly drag that cracked walnut and the scapulas down into your back pockets. As low as they can get, check your ribs. Try to flex the bottom parts of your shoulder blades, try to pull them way low, and then we're going to punch forward from this max down effort. So drive your hand, reach for the wall in front, open that back up, feel everything stretch, and shrug back up. Big shrug up high. He's on tension just a little bit. Big shrug up high and then retract back. Find that walnut up high in between the shoulder blades. Crack that bad boy and then drag your pieces down and into your back pocket as low as you can get it. Check those ribs, lock them down. And we're going to punch forward as far as we'll go and then reverse. Hold backwards. Squeeze, crack the walnut down low as far as deep as you can find it and then shrug up. Big shrug, keeping that retraction, and then punch way forward. Now on this punch forward, I want you to max out the punch forward and pull the shoulders down. You might feel your chest get crampy as you do that. Everybody check your arms, they shouldn't be straight, they should be slightly open. And then we're going to pull back from the bottom. Big squeeze down low, crack that magic right walnut, drag your pieces up and into your ears as high as you can get them. Maximize that shrug and then punch way forward again at the top. Drive as far as you can possibly take it, and then drag the shoulders down. Feel that crampy armpit stuff kick in. Don't let your ribs flare. Pull back at the bottom to finish it up. Big squeeze, big squeeze. Crack that imaginary walnut. Relax your arms. All right. Next way we're going to do this is arms to the side, so you guys can feel the difference. So the exact same movement, but now our arms are here. The only thing I will say is I don't want your arms to move forwards and backwards. Mm -hmm. Tennis balls are only allowed to go up and down on your thighs. This is what we're going to be going for, okay? Try to keep your elbows as straight as you can. It's very common to try to bend like this, and that's just that's a compensation pattern. So that just means every time your body tries to shrug, it has to pull from the bicep for some reason. Why? I don't know. That's what it does. So try to not do that. You're going to try to isolate these specific tissues, okay? So elbows are locked, core is strong, legs are strong, and we're starting our push forward again. It's gonna feel very different this way. And imagine you've got little like, red dots on the front of your shoulders, and shove those red dots in here in front of you. Take them as far as they can go, and now we're gonna shrug up. Check those tennis balls, don't let them move as you pull those shoulders as high as you can in the sky, and then you're gonna find that retraction backwards. Big squeeze back, crack the imaginary wall again, Drag that bad boy down in your back pockets. Punch through your knuckles now as you reach for the ground. Try to make your lats cramp, your back cramp. Reach for it. Once you get all the way down, we're going to push forward. Find that big shoulder press forward. Glide the scapulas across the back. Open them up. Really reach for it. Shrug up. As, as high as you can get. Big shrug. Feel like you're pulling the tennis balls, elbows, and shoulders. Everything is going up with you. And then retract backwards. Big squeeze, crack the walnut, smash it, and then drag it down slow. Reach through your knuckles, punch through to the ground, drag that tissue down, and we're going to go ahead and reverse from there. So go back to your squeeze if you still have it, fight for more, and then go up. Take it as deep as you can, as high as you can. But as you get to the top here, maximize it. Ooh, I'm sure that. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, and punch forward with your shoulders as far as you can go. Take them as far as you can possibly push them. Everybody check their tennis balls. They should be on the sides of their thighs. And now sink them down as much as you can. Try to make that chest cramp if you can. Really drag it and then retract backwards at the bottom. 
Crack the measuring wall again, shrug back up. Take it as high as it'll get. One more push forward with those shoulders. Drive them and then drag them down one last time. Really try to connect to that chest stuff, whatever you want to call it. And then retract backwards to finish it up. Everybody max out that squeeze. Huge squeeze. Of course, you'll be stronger than squeezing your back. And we'll relax. Cool. Good job, guys. All right. So now we're going to go into the uh, shoulder, specifically focusing on the uh, femoral joint, don't make it fancy. Uh, you guys are going to be kneeling for this one, all right? So let's go right knee down, left foot up. Uh, if you want a pad, I have three little foam pads right here, or I can throw a blanket at you if you would like one. Otherwise, we're just going to keep moving, all right? So I'm going to have you sit. So I'll do down there. So the down leg, which should be your right leg, is going to be this, the arm that we're going to focus on, okay? So other side, left side, just lock it in, keep it still, and go home. <laughs> so from here, how we're going to start this, and you guys can just do this with me, the cues will make sense as we go. So everyone get in this kneeling position, right knee should be down, left foot's forward, core is strong, butt is tight, trim all that in place. So, if I come by and I hit your left arm, it shouldn't move. You should be still. So only this side is allowed to mobilize. Everything else is stabilized. So we're going to turn this arm, this right arm, turn your bicep out as far as you can possibly rotate it. Almost like you're going to try to crank the back of your shoulder, just trying to spin. Okay? Now from here, this arm is going to cut down and across your body. Actually, you can go ahead and do that. And we're going to try and see how far we can take it across the chest, keeping that tennis ball facing up. And then we're going to carve out that space as we try to go up in the flexion. Keep your ribs down as much as you can. And that tennis ball is going to kind of go into a neutral position as you fight to pull it back as far as it will go. From here, you're going to keep fighting backwards, but your ribs are going to flex down really strong so you don't extend through your spine. Now from here, you're going to course through the bicep and turn the tennis ball out and reach behind you as you try to screw the upper arm deeper into the shoulder. All right, so we're just going to do a big rotation, and then you're just going to let that carry down to your hip. So we're all going to be internally rotated at the hip. From here, check your core, make sure you're solid, and we're going to pull this arm straight back into extension. As you're pulling back into extension, I want everybody to think tricep, and you're going to squeeze hard, and the back of the shoulder should be really tight. Maximize that, and now we're going to turn the bicep up to the ceiling, rotate through the tennis ball, and you're going to kind of reach up and behind you. Big rotation, carving out the biggest circle possible, constantly fighting rotation. And then that hand is going to cut across the body, completing our circle. So you're going to go rotate around, and you're going to cut across the chest, and then come right back to where we start, down by the hip. All right? So, Chances are you felt something in there that probably didn't feel super pretty, so let's try to improve that and make it better. All right, so we're bracing everything again, same arm, turn it way out, starting from this max external rotation position, and we're gonna cut low and across the body. Flex into your chest, see how far you can take it, maximize that range, it should be a little uncomfortable. Carve out that chest tissue as you reach up for the sky. Flex into the back of the shoulder. Everybody get up nice and tall and straight and just fight for flexion at the top. Your ribs should be pulled down crazy hard as you fight to reach back. And then corkscrew through your arm as you try to reach for that ball behind you. Big rotation, fight for it. And then when the tennis ball comes back to the hip, we're gonna go into extension. So you should be fully turned out with your tennis ball and then pull the shoulder and the arm back. Punch through your knuckles and just fight your extension here and maximize that with everything you got. Everybody just focus on that squeeze that you're trying to crank your tricep and the back of your shoulder. And now we're going to corkscrew through your arm. Big rotation. I'm going to turn this way. Big twist. Keep reaching all the way back and up as we carve out the biggest circle possible. And then we're going to start to rotate as we cut across the body to finish up your shoulder core on this side. And relax. So I think I told you guys, uh, cars are these movements we're doing today are called cars, controlled articular rotations. Some people call them joint circles. 
I consider a joint circle not doing enough justice as to what we're doing. Because a joint circle, I call it, is just it's a movement. We're just warming things up. Here, we're trying to capture everything. It's just more specific. Other side, switch your legs, switch your arms. We'll do the same thing. All right. So, does anybody have any weird pinching in their shoulder or notice anything funky in their shoulder? No? Everybody's good? Okay, cool. So, real quick, just because I see a couple people kind of skipping a little bit of movement. Specifically, as we're coming up and around here, a lot of the times, and I'll be this way so you can see, a lot of the times we just kind of fall straight to the side as we twist. I want you guys to really try to reach back, like you're trying to touch your elbow to your spine as you try to carve out that shoulder and really try to create some space, okay? Here we go. So, right arm is strong, left arm is our focus, core is tight, flip that tennis ball way over and rotate it out. So you should be fully externally rotated through your arm. And now we're going to cut low and across the body. This is what we do on the other side. Reach across, feel that chest stuff start to talk to you, and then carve it up. Constantly reaching for the biggest circle possible. And then like, let that elbow and the pan pull back behind you as much as you can. Squeeze into your shoulder, fight that range of motion. And now we're gonna start to push through the arm out, big rotation and reach from the wall behind you. And then try to feel like you're gonna pull your elbow into your spine as you really try to get back there. Keep the rotation going all the way through this motion. all the way through, and then let the arm come down to your hip as you finish up that twist. From here, big extension, crank it back. Big reach through, core strong, don't lean forward. Flex into that tricep and shoulder. We have more extension than we think. Reach for the ground slash wall behind you. Reach and extend, punch for it. And now spiral the arm out. Big rotation, trying to turn the bicep back the whole time as we come up. Elbow to ear, and keep your rotation going as you cut across the body. Try to keep that tennis ball turned up. All right. Bring it down to the hip, and down to the ground. Everybody check your posture. Some of you guys are starting to fall forward on me. Sit nice and tall, core strong. Tennis ball's all the way turned out. And cut across the body, just like we did before. Find that chest. Reach for it, reach for it. And then you're going to start to carve it up. Big reach through, flex on the top of that shoulder, try to pull back more. Check your core and your ribs, don't let it move, and then rotate through the bicep. Big rotation as you carve out that space deep in that shoulder, constantly trying to rotate for more and reach back for more as it comes all the way down back to your hip whenever you get there. And check the core one last time, big extension, take it way out, as far as away. Huge extension, flex that rear delt, flex your tricep, get it hot, and rotate. Spiral that bicep out, turn from the upper arm as much as you can. Big rotation, constantly reaching back as you try to go up, creating the biggest circle possible. And then at the very top, we're gonna create more rotation as we turn that tennis ball up, reaching across the body as far as you can get. And then we're just gonna bring it down and then come back down where we started, guys, and relax. Cool, good stuff. All right, from here, let's stand. Let's get off the knees. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the thoracic spine. We're gonna do a, a little, uh, I say a little bit of this, we're gonna do more of these than I typically do. So first, we're just gonna hold, uh, stand up and hug our uh, yoga block. So you guys, we did these yesterday, I think, right? The spinal, yeah, mm -hmm. cool. All right, so, um, we're gonna do some of the ways today. Upper. Right, we did a really tight, we did a, we did a really tight upper back one. So for this one right now, I want you thinking global spine, your entire spine. How far can we move it? How far can we take it? How far can we twist it? Whatever you wanna think. And I want you guys to open your feet a little bit wider than you think I need to do. So, most important part of this drill is you have to think about your hips being trapped in cement. So from the hips down, you are buried in cement and you cannot move. So we only articulate through the spine and torso as much as we can, all right? So the biggest places I see people get ugly on this is when they twist, their hips follow them. That was a, that was a very dramatic example, of course. But 
that's usually what happens. There's this trailing effect. And then as we extend, a lot of the times, the hips go forward. So it's like this gyro thing that happens. So try to keep your butt crazy tight, lock your hips in place. Yeah, like the direction you twist, I push that hip. I try to. Right, and I'll give that cue as we go. Yeah. So you guys remember that. So first, if you're really flexible and you're like really confident what you can do with your body, wind your hip, wind your legs up farther. Challenge your challenge your base here. Right? I know you've never done this before, you may not have done this before, but still. <laughs> so I'm gonna have Ashley turn sideways so you guys can see this. So everybody, first thing, chin goes down. You guys should be able to just pick up if you need a visual. Chin goes down to the chest, try not to move your chin from here on out. So now I want you to think about your whole spine, and I want you to feel like you're gonna wrap it around your yoga block and you're gonna crunch and bury that block into your chest. Alright? And take it down as just about as low as you can go, but I don't want anybody to like really fall over. We're just trying to create a big C shape in the spine. Now from here, we're gonna to twist to our right. So rotate with that chest, or with that block on your chest, and turn everything together and see how much rotation you can manage to squeeze out. Use those obliques, use your core, flex into it and fight for core. So we're supposed to run with it. And side bend. You're going to bring your right shoulder down into your right hip. Like you're going to use your obliques, literally bend the spine to the side. And you guys should be able to take that decently far. Really get into it. And then you're going to try to bring this right shoulder back behind you a little bit more for extra rotation. And now you're going to try to snake the spine as you extend from the bottom up piece by piece, as much as you can, which is difficult. And then as you get all the way to the top of your extension, you're going to fight for more extension with a little extra lean, and then you're going to rotate across to your left and take it as far as it will go. Hips stay still, big rotation at the top as far as you can twist. And then once you max out your twist, Side bend, bring your left shoulder kind of into your left hip, find that deep squeeze through that tissue, and then you're going to kind of wrap your block up as you crunch back forwards. So you're going to kind of dive and wrap that block as smoothly as you can, still attempting to wrap the spine around the block. Once you get back to that front position where we started, we're going to change directions. If you need to take a quick breath, you can, and that was hard to breathe as we do this. Alright, so if you're still down, Get there, wrap it up, big opening, and then go back the way you came from. So twist to the left. Big rotation, turn the block and your chest together. Hips stay still. Maximize that twist, flex for more, and then side bend. Right, or left shoulder goes into the left hip, big squeeze, and then we're going to pull that left shoulder backwards for a little bit more twist if we can. And then we're going to start extending from the lowest point possible as we try to sink through the spine. We're going to freeze at the top of your extension and try to arch for more. Drive your chest up into your block here. Big extension there and then rotate to the right. Big twist. Side bend to the right. Find that oblique stuff in there. And then we're going to wrap that block up as we tuck and dive forward, completing that crunch, that roll. As slow as we need to go. Once you get to the front, you can relax. And then we're going to do this again from a different base position. You guys like an extra hot hand by chance? A little bit. A little bit? Can you open up your still in a C motion or are you open? So when you open up, great, great, great question. So as you can, you want. So <laughs> as you open up, I know you guys are here. So once you start extending, you're going to stay like this from down, like you're starting down below. And then as you come up, you're going to let the shoulders pull back. The chin ideally will still stay down because we don't want cervical spine, we want thoracic spine, ideally. And then the chest goes up into the block, collar on the lift, and we try to flex into that upper spine as much as we can. So it should be un uncomfortable and awkward at the top. Top is the worst. Yes, it's my favorite part. Uh, now we're going to go to the knees, and you guys are going to see how this feels from a different base position. So if you want a pad, um, let me know. Actually, I got three of these if you want one. So I'll give this to you because someone changes their mind. Okay, so we're up on our knees like Ashley is. So what you guys are going to realize here is you're probably going to want to fall forward as you crunch. So now you get to see what you actually can control from a more isolated position.
position, right? Now that counterbalance on the hips. Everybody pull your abs in, flex your butt. Actually, tuck your butt underneath you. Lock that in place. Now, bring your chin down and wrap up your yoga block, just like we did before. Go as deep as you can get into that crunch without falling over. It's gonna feel dramatically different than what we just did standing. All right? Get as deep as you can get, and then we're gonna start by twisting to the right. So you're gonna turn your chest, envision your spine piece by piece, rotating through. So you're trying to flex through all these little pieces of your spine to create rotation, and then we're gonna side bend at the top. So that right shoulder dips to the side and into that left hip. We take that C-shaped bend as far as it'll let us go. And then we try to bring that right shoulder back for a little bit more. And then we start extending from down low as much as we can, piece by piece, as we find that big extension. As you get into that upper back, we're gonna lift the chest, lift the collarbones, flex into that spine as much as possible, and then twist to the left once we max that out. Big twist, and we're gonna side bend into this. Try to crunch, bend that spine to the side, good. And then we're gonna wrap that block up as we crunch forward. And go slow, take the time. Once you come back forward, you can take a breath if you need to. Otherwise, we're going to go back and go right. So we see it's very different from the knees than it is standing. All right, so here we go. Wrap it up, bring it all the way down. Bring the chin down a little harder than you think on this one. Really try to peel open that upper back as much as you can. Check your left, check your hips, rotate to the left. Big twist through that torso as much as you can. Envision the spine rotating as much as possible. And then we're gonna find our side bend. Bring that left shoulder into that left hip. Take it as deep as you can get it to go. And then we're gonna bring that left shoulder back behind us for a little bit more rotation. And then we start extending from down low as much as we can. Begin to lift through your chest, lift through your collarbones, kind of push into that block a little bit at the top to find that big spine extension. And then carry that rotation across to the right. Twist as far as it'll let you go. Hips stay crazy still, guys, and side bend to the right. Crunch into that, really try to bend that spine over as much as it will let you. And then think chin tuck and wrap that block up as you carry yourself forward nice and clean. Cool. Very nice. All right. Anybody happen to have any like pinchy, poppy feelings in their spine? No? Yeah? Yeah, a little bit? Sometimes your ribs will jump, especially as you like are bending and twisting. Yeah. That's okay as long as it doesn't hurt. If it does, you might need to go see somebody to pop it back in. Um, but that's it. I mean, you're gonna feel weird things. Ideally, you feel your your lats get very tight, especially as you're coming back and around. That's a section of tissue that typically doesn't work very well on most people. So if you can get that to almost cramp as you're back there, you're really gonna learn how to access some hardcore power out of that tissue. So now we're going to stand up. So we're going to do the neck next. Normally I start with this, but doing things a little different. So I want you guys to take tennis balls in your hand, and I want your yoga block between your thighs. A lot of butter drops just a little there. So a couple reasons I'm doing this this way is because I want you guys to try to feel as much feedback as possible as far as how your body tends to follow the head which is normal. Your head is your captain. It tells you where to go. So your job is to squeeze the absolute hell out of this thing and trap it in place. And your shoulders, from the shoulders down, you're now going to feel like you're trapped in cement as you go to move the neck. Now, if you're prone to tension headaches, neck pain, you know your neck isn't super great, you've injured it before, go slow, stand your body carefully, do not force anything, all right? And if at any point you feel something getting overly tight and crampy, ease off your tension, make your range of motion a little smaller, okay? Stay happy, stay healthy. Okay, arms are tight to the sides. Squeeze your tennis balls. Let's go ahead and pull the shoulder blades down a little bit. Not crazy hard, but just kind of a little package, a little packing, lock that in. Butt's tight, core tight, legs tight, and now we're gonna bring the chin down to the chest. And I think my cheeks are pretty good here, so y'all shouldn't have to look up too much, but if you do, do what you gotta do. So from here, that chin tucked down to the chest, I want you trying to stretch the back of your neck as much as you can, okay? And everybody just, just open that up. 
you're gonna flex into the front of the neck a little bit to pull yourself deeper. And now we're gonna drag the chin across the chest to the right. And really try to carve that chin across the chest and create that rotation. And don't let your shoulders follow your chin. Begin to take that chin to your collarbone and then keep that rotation going. And then begin to look over your right shoulder. And now you're gonna to start to extend your head backwards from the base of your neck. So you're kind of twisted and looking back and up. As you snake the spine of the neck back, and you're gonna go into a big extension as you look way back. Now, from this position, everybody should be all the way back. I want you to push your jaw off the ceiling. Feel that stretch in your neck. And now follow that rotation around to the left. As far as you can get, big twist through the spine. Keep your shoulders still, keep rotating as far as you can get that twist to go. So your chin's gonna come all the way over to your left collarbone and then down to your left shoulder and scrape your chin across your chest so you come back to the center where we start. Now we're gonna reverse. So make sure that chin tuck is nice and deep. Body still, twist to your left. Drag the chin across the chest to that left collarbone over the left shoulder and then begin looking backwards and extending. Imagine you're trying to open up the neck or extend the neck piece by piece. And then as you get to the very top of that extension, same thing, jaw goes up and forward. Feel that stretch your neck and open that stuff up. And then take your rotation to the right. Attempting to twist through one piece at a time, attempting to keep the shoulders still. Chin's gonna hit that left or right shoulder, excuse me, to the right collarbone and then drag it down and across to the center of the chest. And we're gonna relax there. All right? So, a little bit different, weird way of moving the neck, to say the least. So now we're gonna just look at the linear movement here for just a second. Um, but the biggest thing with this linear movement, guys, is attempting to connect to this tissue the right way. It's very difficult. Most of us have like a really rigid spot in our neck that doesn't move very well, it's just the way we are now. So as we're going, mine's not perfect, but we're attempting to really snake the spine of the neck piece by piece in just this linear up and down direction is what we're going to attempt to do. And I know mine's not perfect, it's not a great example, but I hope that gives you guys an idea of what we're trying to do. So it's as the chin is down here, we're going to try to lift the neck up from the lowest points possible. Keep that chin down until it has to come up at the top. Once we get to the top, we reverse it with the chin first. So the chin's actually gonna come kind of down, almost like you're gonna try to pull your jaw back and up behind you to open up from way up high, and then we extend the curl of the neck back down, okay? I'm gonna try to get these cues right for you guys so you can try to activate this properly, but let's see how it goes. So this is just up and down, right? So first, this is just start in a neutral position, and we're just going to tuck that chin down slowly. So pull the chin down slow, and imagine you're trying to open up the tissue at the back of your skull as you tuck the chin down. And now keep tucking the chin down and try to open up more and more of the neck, and don't be afraid to really let the neck fall down so you can really open this stuff up in the neck. Remember, we don't want to fall forward with the shoulders, we're just taking the neck as far as it'll go. So now at the bottom here, you're gonna feel like you're gonna take your jaw and pull it back and up as much as you can. And we're gonna start from the bottom of the neck. I'm sorry, hey, let's reset that. My keys are off now. My bad. Start from the bottom, guys. Start that chin tuck all the way down. So chin stays down and start from the bottom of the neck. So don't move your chin until the very last bit. So imagine the base of your neck is pulling you back as much as possible. And then we're gonna go up one little centimeter, then up another centimeter, and another centimeter, and try to get that neck to extend piece by piece. And then at the very end, the chin is going to pop up. So you find that big extension way up high in the back of the skull, hitting the uh, occipital tissue, if you wanna get fancy. And once you get all the way up there, you, your chin can't go any higher, we're gonna jet our jaw to the ceiling, push that chin way up, now, from here, we're going to pull the chin back and we're going to tuck the chin like we're going to try to peel open the back of the skull. So it's a very high, awkward 
chin tuck as we bring the chin back down to the chest and attempt to open from the top down now. And it's kind of weird, take your time on it. It's not going to feel super smooth at first. I'm just going to work it and be on the spine back open, going down piece by piece. And you're attempting to keep subtle tension in the neck the whole time, trying to flex into it. So we're going to go ahead and do this one more time. So everybody, way down. I know it's a lot to focus on here. So take the chin all the way down to the chest. Let's just focus on that big opening, okay? And now we're going to start to pull back from the very base of the neck. Imagine you're pulling one vertebrae back at a time, piece by piece. And envision your spine making a C shape as you try to continue to bend backwards. Chin stays tucked to the very end. And once you run out of room to pull the spine back without lifting the chin, then you lift the chin and take it all the way up. As high as it will go. And then as soon as you get to the top, let's get our jaw real quick. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull the jaw back in. And then we're gonna start the chin tuck going down. And open up that spine and just peel it open as we take it all the way back down. And then once you hit the bottom of your range of motion, you can relax. Cool. So, weird way of controlling spine, but a lot of us, especially desk posture, and I know a lot of you jiu-jitsu people like to beat each other up a lot, you know, when get slammed. So, it's a really good way to keep your pieces healthy. Uh, hips are what we're gonna do next. So this is one of my favorite ones. We're gonna do a lot more reps on the hips than we've done on everything else. So, I should maybe look to because I may have torched your hips slightly yesterday. So, you guys are gonna need your PVC pipe and a tennis ball. One PVC pipe and one tennis ball. All right? So, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and give everybody a second PVC pipe. So no tennis ball, two PVC pipes. <laughs> I'm gonna do the because it's a matching pair. Everybody has two? Okay. So pipes are like your third and fourth legs, okay? Or I guess second and third legs, because you're going to be standing all the way. So hardcore tripod, right? I want your body very still, very stable. The biggest thing here is we're not letting the pelvis move as much as we can. We're trying to only move in the hip joint, okay? So left knee is gonna pull up into the chest. So from right here, before we start cranking it really, really hard, I want you guys to just kind of peel that hip open and make sure you're not gonna hit your PVC pipes. If you do, open your hands, okay? Good? All right, so back to the left leg. We're gonna focus on that one, if you switch legs. So knee, from here, and before we start pulling, let's brace our core. Sit in some air, pack the abs. The leg you're standing on should feel like it's rooted into the ground. So we're all gonna do this together. So from here, we're gonna peel this hip open as far as it will go. As we peel this open, we're making sure the hips stay facing forward. Now you're gonna imagine there's a tennis ball behind your knee, I want you to crush it. And now you're gonna flip and kick your foot backwards as you push your thigh back behind you and find that butt and hamstring tension. And then I want you to squeeze your legs together like you're gonna crack a watermelon between your thighs. From here, everybody check your core to kind of regain your posture, make sure you're nice and tall. And then I want you to think about the tennis ball behind the knee and kick your thigh backwards, just a little bit. So now we're feeling your hamstring and butt as much as possible. And now think dog in a fire hydrant as you hike your legs straight out to the side. Try to keep your pelvis relatively still on this. Get it as high as it can go, and then pull the ankle underneath as the knee, so your ankle's gonna go under. As the knee goes up, we try to create that rotation. Now from here, we're gonna keep pulling the ankle forward. So you're gonna leave the ankle, and it goes across the body, so pull your ankle down, like that. There you go. And then, so, and everybody just kind of hold on to this for a second. So you're trying to pull your foot up into your shoulder, up into your chest, scoop your foot up, really pick that thing up. As you scoop it, it helps you find tissue you would normally use. Pull the knee up higher, and now keep that and open your hip all the way back up where we came from. So if you lose your tennis ball, don't worry about it too much. Open, 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 and then flip and 
kick your foot backwards, just like we did before. Squeeze in the butt, try to keep it clean. And then we're going to think a little bit of hamstring for a second, and then crush the watermelon between the thighs. And on this one, actually pull your thighs together. Feel that squeeze. You might actually pop your hip, which shouldn't be that bad. Core stays tight, kick your thigh backwards. Find the butt specifically here. Really lock it in. Hike your leg out to the side. Big hike. Your ankle should stay in line with your knee as you hike this out as high as it can possibly go. Fight that. And now flip your ankle underneath. Keep leaning that ankle way forward like we did before, and it will take you and your thigh back to that front position. Pull it forward. And then once we complete that, we're going to bring the leg down. Cool. All right, other leg. Same thing. So real quick, um, did anybody have like a really nasty pop and transition as they flip that leg back and forth? Anything really pinching really nasty? Oh, man, it hurt. Hurt a little bit? Yeah. So I will say there's a, there's a little bit cramped a little bit. Okay, that's normal. So there's a, a trick with the flip and kick. If you guys, once you get to here, if you think about pushing something with the bottom of your foot, that always makes it smooth. Your brain is gonna try to do this however it thinks it needs to do it. So if you put your mind in the farthest point possible and just think, move it, it's almost always cleaner, okay? It's hard to control, don't get me wrong, but it's always clean. Okay, strong left leg, bring your right knee up. As high as it can get. We're going to fight this one. Bring it up nice and high, core strong, and peel your hip open. Nice and wide. Find that side butt stuff. Really crank your knee back to the wall behind you like you're trying to push something with that knee. And now think hamstring, crush that imaginary tennis ball behind the knee. And then we're going to flip and kick the foot backwards as we try to screw the thigh in and find that hip extension. And then we're going to crush the legs together and crack that imaginary watermelon. Core stays nice and tight, and then we kick the thigh back a little bit more. Lots of butt. Think a little bit of hamstring here, trying to find the whole back of the leg. Hike it out to the side. As wide, as high as you can get, big hike to the side, and then let the ankle go underneath at the end. Just let it go to the other side, let that ankle carry forward, and the ankle pulls your knee back to the forward position. And then we're going to reverse it. So your foot's still across the body, and then we peel the thigh open. So going out to the side, lots of side butt. Keep that still, Jesus. Yeah, that's yeah, like a big yeah. pull, it, pull it open, pull it open. It's fresh. Lots of hamstring. And then flip and kick as you drive your thigh backwards. Lots of butt. Really try to capitalize on the backside of the leg, and then squeeze the legs in and together. Squeeze your thighs together, find that nice tension between the thighs, kick back a little bit more. Lots of butt and hamstring, and then hike out. Straight to the side, just hike, 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 as high as it will get. <laughs> Maximize that, and then pull the ankle underneath, screwing the thigh into the hip, lead with the ankle as it comes forward, and That's pretty, that's pretty crazy. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to look at the, uh, the pelvis really quick. So you guys can drop your PVC pipes. We're just going to do a couple of these. This is more of, a, more of an awareness thing so you guys can see how your lower back is working. So um, just like actually standing here, your hands will be on your hips. So the goal here is we're only working on a pelvic tilt. So you're going to flip your tailbone back and up behind you and feel like you're flexing from the top of the butt into the lower back and find that big flip of your butt as much as you can. If your spine gets crampy and pinchy for some reason, don't force it. Just fall. So, maximize that flip back and then you're gonna slowly tuck your pelvis underneath you as much as you can. And use your hands as feedback, like grab your pelvis and pull it under you and make it go farther. And then change your grip and kind of push those bones and make it flip backwards. All right, we're just gonna work on that. So tuck underneath, and really pull it out. You need to squeeze your butt, drag your sit bones underneath you, push your pubic bone forward, maximize that movement, and then flip. 
Make the pelvis tilt back, flip your tailbone back. If you know where your sit bones are, imagine you're pulling them back behind you and kind of up, and then tuck your butt underneath you. Grab those bones, flip underneath, really drive the pubic bone forward and up, and you're gonna scoop your pelvis. Take it as far as you can go, pull it for more, and then flip back. Really pull the tailbone up. Imagine you're trying to shorten your spine on the low back, and that will help pull it a little bit higher. And then we'll tuck under one more time. Big tuck under, and everybody just, I mean, just drive your pelvis forward on this one. Really fight for it. Don't let your shoulders fall forward. This is all pelvis. Keep driving, keep pulling it under. I know it's not moving, but you're just fighting to take it farther. For another three, two, and relax. Cool. So, awkwardly difficult sometimes, but that's a really good one. Especially if you're, a lot of the time when your hips don't move the way you want them to, it's because of your lower back. So that's a really easy way to kind of warm things up. Uh, we're gonna go to the ground next. Normally we would go into the knees next, but we're gonna go back to the hips. So you guys are gonna be on hands and knees. That's how we're gonna be. <clears throat> All right, so this is very similar to what we did standing with the hips. But now we're going to do it from all fours. So Ashley's going to bend on very quickly. So if the right knee is what we're going to do, first the knee comes into the chest, as far as it'll go. And there will be some movement in the spine, but I want you ideally to think about moving just from the hip like we did before. So knee goes up, and then we hike out. Just, uh, or again, now it's like true dog right here. The tricky part is from here, because now we try to rotate through the thigh and push the foot up to the ceiling. So now you're fighting gravity. As you kick up, we're going to find hamstring and butt. The thigh pulls in towards the center line, which is kind of weird. When you're in this position, your brain doesn't really know where you are in space. And then you pull the knee underneath you. And that's half the rep. And then we kick back. And then we hike out, which again is weird. Your body doesn't probably know where you are. And then the foot goes down as the knee goes up. You capitalize on that lift. And then it comes into your chest. Okay? And I'll say all that again as you go. All right, hands and knees, let's get it going. So, at first, brace your core, strong arms on the ground, lock it in. Take that right knee and pull it into your chest. And think about your spine, what is your spine doing? I want it to be still, we're just focusing on the hip. From here, everybody open that hip to the side. High it out. Take it as far as it will go without your lower back rotating, so a lot of you are about to be corrected. So that's about as far as you can. So from here to height, we'll go farther. So that's probably in the edge right there. All right. So now think hamstrings. So that tennis ball behind the knee. Remember that? Try to crush it. And then you're going to flip your foot up to the sky as you drive your thigh up to the sky. We're going to try to open this up. So I'm going to try to pull you. Is that curveball? No? Okay. So now we're going to drive up a little bit more. Everybody check your lower back. Most of you are extending. Pull your abs in tight. And now pull your thigh, like it's going to go across your body, so to the midline, so the midline of your spine. And then we're going to pull the knee all the way underneath you, like it goes back into the chest. And then we're going to go to the reverse. So we're going to really check that torso and those abs, keep it nice and still. We're going to kick the thigh back and up. Find that butt hamstring at the top. Don't arch the back too much at all. All butt hamstring. From here, we're going to pull the leg straight out to the side. So this is going to come out. It's going to feel kind of weird. Find that side hip tension. Think hamstring and tennis ball. So we're going to try to squeeze that imaginary tennis ball behind the knee. And then we're going to bring the foot down to the ground as the knee tries to fight for the ceiling. And bring the knee into the shoulder slash chest all at the same time. And then let that knee come to the other thigh. You guys can relax for a second. So very different way of moving. So hopefully that made sense. We're gonna go ahead and switch legs. Normally I would do like three or four of those back to back, but I wanna make sure we can get to this last stuff. So we'll go ahead and do the other leg. I'm gonna try to pick on some of you other guys now so y'all can know how you're moving. So left knee is the focus. Find your base, strong core, pull that knee into your chest. Now from here, we're gonna hang that leg out to the side. Open that hip, keep your back still as much as you can. You're just moving with what the hip will allow you to do. From here, we're gonna flip the foot up and kick the thigh up to the sky. So 
much as you can. Think butt and hamstring as you get to the top. Let's push through the foot just a little bit, find some butt, and then we're going to pull the thigh in to the middle using that inner thigh as much as you can. I don't feel weird as you do that. And once you get there, we're going to bring the knee all the way down underneath you back to the chest. Good. And now we reverse it. Keep that knee bent as you kick the thigh back to the sky. Shake those abs, keep it still. And now we're going to hike the leg out to the side from this weird position. So just pull the legs open, ankle goes down as the knee tries to fight for the ceiling. And then you're going to pull the knee to the shoulder and then bring it underneath you. And then relax. So I know that's, I know that's tricky. So normally if you come to one of the hip classes, we will do lots of that along with some other very rough stuff. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Ash, Ash knows all that. It's <laughs> awesome. Oh, so hard. So, that is awesome. from here, let's have you guys uh, stay on the butt. And we're just going to briefly hit the knees. Um, this is a big one that I see, especially you guys that like to put your friends in submissions and crank each other's joints in nasty places. <laughs> so, what we're going to just show you is what your knees are supposed to do as far as rotation goes. A lot of us think a knee is just a hinge joint. Which, I mean, that's what it is, don't get me wrong, but it's supposed to rotate a lot. So, grab your thigh, doesn't matter which thigh, honestly, and just hold it in place. Ankle's gonna be neutral, and all we're gonna do is look at our shin bone and try to twist it. So the shin's gonna twist out first, as far as it'll go. Now, most of you are gonna lead this movement with your ankle, and you're gonna try to turn your foot to make that happen. I want your brain to go to your shin, and you're trying to move through the shin and like the calf kind of. So you're gonna twist out as far as I'll let you go. And now I want you to slowly try to turn that bad boy in and find your internal rotation and see how far it goes. Some of you won't have any. It's gonna to get to neutral and it's gonna stop. So from here, let's use a hand, kind of grab your calf and give it a twist in and try to tell it where to go. So you're actively flexing through your knee and your hamstrings as you try and make this thing internally rotate. Some of you might actually get a hamstring cramp if you do this hard enough. And now we're gonna just let go with the hand and just control that rotation as we go back out. So take your fingers, bring them underneath your thigh and you can feel those strings, those tendons in the back of your, your leg behind the knee. So, the ones on the outside of the leg, if you flex into those as you turn your foot out, they're going to rotate you farther. Those are your external rotators, basically. So, that makes sense. If you're flexing in that, that should pull you farther. So, everybody kind of feel that and own that for a second. And it might feel funky in the knee. If it does, don't fight it too much. And now, you're going to feel the bands on the inside of the knee. There should be two of them. That there should be a line that's pretty close together. Flex those and use those to pull you in as much as you can. And then really try to squeeze into those, really try to flex them. If you want to use your hand, you can use your hand to see if you can squeeze out more rotation. And then we're just going to rotate back out and we'll relax from there into the other side. So the way I assess and work with the body, even though this is what the knee is primarily doing, internal rotation is considered fundamental movement of the knee because throughout our gait and walking movement, there is rotation that has to happen from an internal rotation perspective. If you don't have that, it compensates at the ankle or the hip. So we want to have some rotation there that we can actively own. It also kind of snap proofs yourself because a lot of the times when you misstep and the knee buckles in, it's because you don't have any wiggle room in your internal rotation. If you give yourself a, buff a buffer, you're less breakable. Other side. Same thing. So, shin, turn it out. And you can use your hand if you want to now, since so you guys know what that's like, but just crank it, see how far it goes. So now you know those hamstring cues too, so you can feel those bands on the outside, flex into them, and see if you can make this thing go farther. And really give yourself a little challenge here, see how far you can take it. It's probably going to be a struggle mentally to make it go, but see what you can do. And then hit those middle bands and flex into them as you internally rotate, as far as it will go. And we're going to use the hand, kind of grab that calf, give it a little twist, and tell it where to go. 
If yours is not internally rotating at all, you can grab both hands, like Steven's doing, and you can really give it a pull and really tell it where to go. There's just nothing wrong with that. Do what you gotta do. And now we're gonna go back out. So those outside hamstring bands flex into it as you rotate out, as far as you can get. Your calf might feel crinkly possibly, depending on what you've done in the last few days. Really flex into that, and then back to the inside. Flex, rotate. If you want to get even more feedback, you can find those inside bands and you can kind of pull them down towards the groin like you're going to drag them and really tell them where to move as they go. And you can actually get true, specific tactile feedback on that movement. And then we're going to rotate back out. We'll go back in one more time. I think that'll keep leaving the other leg. Back internal rotation. Last one, y'all really grab your leg, give it a good twist, really fight for it, try to make it go farther than it was before, and then we'll just turn back out and we'll relax. So, hopefully that shows you a little something with your knees. Normally I have like knee and ankle classes where we would do just knees for like an hour, an hour 15. So, you'll keep an eye out for that. Um, that's our, those are our movements for today. I know it's 11.15 right now. My plan was to do a few more minutes of breath work to finish things up. If you guys want to stick around for that, you're more than welcome to. If you gotta leave, you're more than welcome to. But if you're gonna hang out, we'll just lay on our backs. And we'll get into this second round of breath work. So this will be different than what we did before. This is gonna be, this actually might be a little harder than you think it's gonna be. Because my goal for this is to teach you guys how to breathe as lightly and as little as possible without going into freak out mode. All right, so hand on the stomach, hand on the chest, just like we started with before. All right, so this is all nasal breathing. Every single bit of it, you're not allowed to breathe through your mouth unless you're congested, it's all get out, you just can't breathe through your nose. So think about that hand on your stomach, think about the hand on your chest. And I want you guys to take a breath into the nose and feel how they move. Normal. These aren't big breaths, by the way, just natural breathing. Whatever your natural inhale is. And then your natural exhale. So notice that movement from the chest and the stomach. Now, I want you to try to not let the stomach or the chest rise or fall as you breathe. So you're going to take a very, very gentle, slow, and light inhale and bring that air in. And then you're gonna exhale and let that air out. But notice, that, or don't let your stomach or chest move. And then we're just gonna naturally make that inhale again. Super light, super easy. Don't let anything rise. And then exhale, let that air out. Don't let anything move. It's very tricky to do that. And we'll go ahead and inhale again. Find that breath. And then we will exhale. And everybody's breathing pattern is going to be a little different here. If I'm going too slow or fast for you, I want you to do what you got to do. We'll go ahead and inhale again. Find that invisible movement. This is pure diaphragm that we're going for. And then we'll exhale. And we're just going to do this one more time. So we're going to inhale. Find that invisible movement. So, now we're going to change the pace a little bit. So everybody take a big breath in through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Out. Now we inhale through the mouth. Exhale through the nose. Inhale through the mouth. Pinch your nose. 
Inhale through the mouth. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the mouth. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale. If you want to feel like you want to go to sleep, that means I did my job, right? <laughs> um, so Sundays are restorative. Sundays are supposed to be low level. We're just trying to get your body moving right. Great recovery day, especially for those of you training hard as hell. It's really good to just move and make your body happy. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is kind of alternating between upper body focus and lower body focus, or kind of mixing joints up as the Sundays go. So every Sunday will be a little bit different, but this is kind of how it's going to go. I start with the breath work, hand you up, do the movements, chill you out, so you can really get in a nice, relaxed recovery state. Anybody have any questions on what we did today? Or